Australia was the wild colonial boy. I am a qualified medical man. I've examined the body of the deceased and find it perforated by several bullets. The shot between the shoulders, the two shots into the brain, and the one through the body were severally sufficient to cause death. Charles Assenheim, MD. On the 6th of May 1865, Ben Hall's body was placed in the police barracks, where after a coronial inquest conducted into his death by the police magistrate, Mr William Ferrand, concluded that a verdict of justifiable homicide by the police be recorded after which 400 to 500 people pass through to take their last look at the bush ranger's mortal remains. One person to view the body was Ben Hall's brother-in-law, John Maguire, who stated, I never saw such a sight in my life, and I hope I shall never see such a sight again. He was covered with a mass of wounds, practically torn to pieces with shots. I counted nearly 30 wounds, so they must have used him for target practice, the cowardly brutes. They must have shot him for amusement after he was dead. It was a most cruel business. They must have been panic-stricken, a bunch of them, to serve one single man like that. I turned away from the horrible sight in disgust. And that was the last time I saw the face of my brother-in-law, Ben Hall. After a church service and procession attended by over 200 relatives and friends, Ben Hall was laid to rest at Forbes Cemetery, on Sunday the 7th of May, 1865. His grave may be visited today in Forbes. Three days later, on the 10th of May, Johnny Gilbert and John Dunn were declared outlaws under the Felons Apprehension Act, 1865. Ben Hall was never declared an outlaw. In due course, however, the informant received £500 reward. The sound of gunfire echoed through the early morning... <laughs> Gilbert and Dunn were making their way to meet up with Ben Hall. The two bush rangers quickly came to the conclusion that their friend and leader had been captured, or worse, shot dead. They fled from the Billabong area, riding hard to put some distance between themselves and the dreadful scene. On the 8th of May, near Maringo, Gilbert and Dunn stopped two men and asked questions about police movements, but did not rob or harm them. They then rode on towards Maringo, the two men noted that the bush rangers looked worn out and their once fine horses knocked up. They noted also they were heavily armed carrying revolvers and Gilbert had a tranter revolving rifle slung over his shoulder. Shortly afterwards, the bush rangers stole two horses from a nearby farm. Now declared outlaws, the two bush rangers arrived in Binalong on Friday the 12th of May, 1865, at the home of John Kelly grandfather of Dunn. Kelly, who had harboured the gang previously, would betray the two bushrangers for the £2,000 reward by sending word to the police of their impending visit. As with Connolly, this betrayal was also kept secret by the authorities. On Saturday morning the 13th of May, police from Binalong surrounded Kelly's house. Constables Hales and King, in company with Constables Hall and Bright, approached the dwelling, but the barking dogs gave them away. As Kelly and his wife emerged from the house, Kelly yelled out, The house is surrounded with bloody troopers! Hales and King then rushed the door, but Gilbert and Dunn had fled out a window, making for the paddock where the horses were. The four troopers gave chase, with both sides firing at each other. One shot from the bush rangers struck King in the foot as they fled. Gilbert stopped by a tree, aimed his rifle to fire, but it misfired. The outlaw ran towards the bank of a dry creek. He then ran along the creek bed when Hales and Bright fired together. <laughs> Hale's shot went wide. Constable Bright's bullet found its mark, hitting Gilbert in the left side of his back, passing through his heart and body, exiting out his chest near his left nipple. The outlaw crashed to the ground dead. Dunn kept running and escaped into the scrub. Gilbert's body was brought to the Binalong police station and after an inquest was buried unceremoniously in a police paddock just outside the town. His grave may be visited today at Binalong. John Dunn 
laid low for eight months before also being betrayed. It was after an almighty gunfight with troopers, in which Dunn was wounded and captured, then taken to Dubbo. He would soon escape from Dubbo jail. He was recaptured a short time later and brought to trial in Sydney. He was found guilty of the murder of Constable Nelson and robbery under arms. He was sentenced to hang at Darlinghurst Jail. The sentence duly carried out on the 19th of March 1866. He was 19 years old. John Dunn is buried at Botany Cemetery in Sydney. A summary of the prominent members of Ben Hall's gang and the fate they met. Mickey Burke, shot dead age 20. John O'Mealy, shot dead age 22. Ben Hall, shot dead age 27. John Gilbert, shot dead age 22. John Dunn, hanged Darlinghurst Jail age 19. John Vane, sentenced to 15 years jail and would die in 1906 age 63. He fired a shot at Kelly, which did bring him to the ground. And he fired point blank at Davis, who fell dead.